Okay guys, so it's not over. Expedition South Africa continues. We got one last amazing surprise. Uh, whilst we were out at Ardenau Hobbs in Potchestrum, uh, his good friend Corne Ace, who's down in Omanis, ended up getting a very unusual rescue call uh, for a black spitting cobra. And they don't occur there in, this, uh, in Omanis. Uh, it was a stowaway from a lady who lives up in the Cedarburg, which is where we've come here today. We're here with Willem van Sale. He's given us an amazing location out here. So we're here on a farm that we can work with in peace and they're able to release this guy back into its natural environment. Hi guys, welcome to my channel. Today we've got an amazing species of snake. This is the black spitting cobra, Naja nigricenta woodai. They used to be categorized or linked together with the black neck spitting cobra. I thought it was just a different color morph, but due to genetic differences and morphological differences, they've actually put them as their own species now. Now there's two subspecies within the group. You have the zebra spitting cobra, which is the nomial species that was first discovered and then the black spitting cobra, which is Naja nigricenta woodai. They were also thought for a while that they were Cape Cobra morph, because you do get pitch black Cape Cobras, but they are their own species living in the southwest or northwestern side of South Africa, from the west coast up into the Cedarburg, and across up towards southern Namibia. A lot of people think that cobras are mostly nocturnal, but your black neck spitting cobras, black spitting cobras, as well as your zebra spitting cobra, all live in very harsh environments. Now, they're known to be mostly diurnal, but during extreme hot periods of the year, where maybe animals and prey items may be moving it around at different times of the day, they are known to change their habits from diurnal to nocturnal to be able to optimize the amount of time that they can move around, whether it's too hot during the day. If the floor is 60 degrees during the middle of summer in Namibia, these snakes can't move around at all. So they become nocturnal and they will really change their habits in accordance to their environmental conditions, which is really unique among snakes. They're very generalist feeders, primarily feeding on rats and rodents and things like that, on other snake species. They'll take their chances on hatchling birds that are nesting on the ground or up in the trees. Black spitting cobras reach between about 1.2 to 1.5 meters and with really large specimens at around 1.8 meters. They're set to get about two, but uh, I'd love to see a two meter black spitting cobra. That would be amazing. So in terms of reproduction, guys, these are oviparous snakes. You have oviviparous, which is development internally, and then they still give birth to live young. And then you have viviparous, which is completely live young. So these guys will give birth, like most elapid snakes, to eggs, anywhere between 10 to 15 eggs. And the babies will come out like carbon copies of their parents at around 10 to 15 centimeters in length. A beautifully adapted snake living in this beautiful environment, very rocky outcroppings. They really enjoy rocky terrain with some river beds where they have access to water. And obviously where there's water, there's prey. So they're usually found around those sorts of areas. Like all snakes, they're very good swimmers. Cobras specifically quite enjoy water or often live near water. So they're quite at home, whether in the trees, on water or on land. Now there's a very interesting evolutionary science to spitting cobras. Spitting has evolved three different times in three different places. 14 million years ago was your wrinkles, which is your most primitive spitter. And you can see that with that very forward lunging movement that they do. Then you have your African spitters, which evolved around 10 to 6 million years ago, which is these guys, your red spitting cobras, Mozam spitters, black neck spitters, as well as your Mozambique spitter. And then you have your Asian spitters, which evolved about 4 million years ago. Now there's quite a difference between the different spitting patterns of all these species of snakes, yet there's also a lot of similarities. Now what's quite interesting to note is that there's a lot of spitting cobras as well as non-spitting cobras, which is a quite a strange adaptation considering that your non-spitting cobras have adapted to produce neurotoxic venom which works on the respiratory system and the nervous system which shuts down the prey's nervous system very quickly and the heart kind of shuts down. Now these guys have evolved 
spitting and neurotoxic venom didn't work as well in a spitting snake considering that neurotoxic venom isn't as painful on impact of eyes or on skin whereas cytotoxic venom is far far more painful so these guys have evolved to develop cytotoxic venom even though most lapids and cobra species are predominantly cytotoxic so that's very unique amongst the spitting cobras and the weird thing is that no one really knows why they've developed spitting. You would think that they would have developed spitting because of being trampled on by a big megafauna here in Africa, but megafauna only evolved around five, four, five million years ago. So that's actually after these guys had developed spitting. So there's not a lot of research or conclusive evidence as to why these guys have developed spitting as a defense mechanism because most snakes have developed their venom as an attack to be able to overpower their prey items and swallow them down, help them with digestion, whereas spitting cobras have evolved their venom in a defensive mechanism, which is completely contrary to what other snakes have done. So very, very unique in that regard. And we have noticed with the Mozambique spitting cobra that they actually have varying forms of being able to spit. They can either spit directly where they do contractions of the vellum glands and the whole of their front fixed fangs. They are front fixed fang snakes like all the lapids. And they have these little grooves that point at 90 degrees that allow the venom to be spread out directly. And you can either get the direct two spray or you get it where they do cephalic oscillations, which means that these snakes actually have form of uh, neural processing, which the Asian spitters don't have which is actually very unique among snakes and reptiles, that they're actually doing neural processing. So they're actually processing and understanding where the prey item or the aggressor will be. So if I'm moving my face this direction, it will understand the direction I'm going and spray with the tail off towards the end. Hey guys, so we had an amazing morning with the black spitting cobra. We got some great spitting, but now it's time for the great moment and it's time to release this guy. It was an almost 800 kilometer round trip to go pick her up and bring her all the way back home from Harmanus. So this is a really, really great moment. A lot of effort went into bringing the snake back home and now's the time to let her go. This is always one of the best moments releasing a snake back in the wild, especially one that came from nearly 500 kilometers away. A little stowaway black spitter is ready to make her way home. Cheers, you beautiful creature. So guys, snake's back in the wild. She's a cobra, so she's not slithering away straight away. She is back in the wild and this is really what I live for. What an amazing moment. So on that note guys, thanks for watching. If you liked this video, please do hit the subscribe button, hit that notifications bell, and remember to stand for what we stand on. Mm -hmm.